Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. So this video is gonna be a little bit of review for some of you guys that have been with me a while. And for some of you guys that are new to this channel, you are gonna get something out of this video. I keep seeing a confusion between the words speculation and investment in the comment section of a lot of my videos. So I do wanna review this. Put simply, speculation tends to refer to short-term flips in the antiques and collectibles trade. Speculation means you're going to the market, you're buying an antique, you're buying a collectible, and you're gonna hold it for five years or less, then you're gonna flip it onto the secondary market. When you invest in something, what I mean when I say invest is a period of five years or more, meaning you're gonna hold it long-term. It could be 10 years, could be 15 years, could be 20 years, could be 30 years, could be 50 years, could be 100 years if you want to put it in a blind trust. That's all up to you. I actually do have a video planned on that, and I do not recommend anybody setting up a trust to hold their precious collections after they die. It does not work to the benefit of that individual. It does not work to the overall benefit of the heirs in question who inherit the beneficiaries of that particular trust. So I will state there are going to be videos of that coming out on this channel in the future. But where I'm going with this is please understand when I tell you guys like the video I did on Marvel Universe trading cards, I flat out told you guys do not invest in Marvel Universe trading cards. What I am meaning in that video is that if you are coming into the market you are buying Marvel Universe trading cards and you are holding them for five years or more, I am telling you that market will most likely change. Most people will probably not care about Marvel Universe trading cards graded by PSA or any other company 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Now, is there going to be some of those cards that will have a collectible following? Maybe some of them will still have value 5, 10, 15 years from now? Yes, you can have a market like that that exists. What I am telling you, though, if you are paying a premium to get something like a Marvel Universe trading card on the secondary market today in 2021, you better hope that that market goes exponentially higher over the short term so you can flip that product into the market and you can get your money back. Now, to be fair, for those of you out there that have contacted me and you said, you know what, Sean, I have five factory sealed boxes of Marvel Universe trading cards. I'm happy to sell this stuff into the market to the first Timmy, Kimmy, or Poindexter that wants to pay a premium for them. You do you. That's short-term speculation. I'm all for that. I have nothing against any of you guys that are engaging in short-term flips, that are making your money over the short term, that are even selling to some of these people that want to believe this market's going to be stable over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So I want to make that very clear. I am pro-speculation in a lot of pop culture collectibles. I am less so pro-investment over the long term in pop culture collectibles. That's why when I show you guys pieces of my own collection for long-term investing, they're pretty much coins, currency, historical documents, first edition books, firearms, edge weapons, maybe vintage advertising, maybe pieces of art, items of that nature. I do not like most pop culture collectibles to be held for long-term investment gains in the antiques and collectibles trade with few exceptions. Now, I know what you're going to ask, Sean, what are those exceptions? Well, let me use this as an example. Let's say that you have a lot of top-tier reserve list Magic the Gathering cards that are in very high grade, like PSA 9, BGS 9.5, or even maybe some PSA 10s. Those particular cards, I do think, are blue chips. Those are items that you can hold for the long term, and most likely there will be an established secondary market where you can sell those items into the market 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. The same is true with vintage Wizards of the Coast Pokemon cards that are in high demand, especially the very early holofoil cards, like your holofoil first edition Charizard, items of that nature. I think those will be coveted 5, 10, 15, 20 years into the future. The problem is you have a lot of people that are coming into these markets. They want to quote unquote invest in them 
long term and they can't afford to go after an alpha edition under under underground C dual land in PSA 9 or PSA 10 condition. So they're going to the market and they're buying up the dark or homelands reserve list cards. And because they think they're putting their money into quote unquote reserve list cards, they think they're investing in the blue chip side of Magic the Gathering when you cannot compare a fourth tier reserve list card to that of a top tier reserve list card. And that's the mistake that people are making. It's no different than some of you that have reached out to me. Sean, you don't understand. I'm investing in factory sealed booster boxes of Ice Age, Homelands, Fallen Empires, and Mirage. Because I can't afford a factory sealed booster box of Antiquities, of Arabian Nights, if you could even find it, or an Alpha starter deck, a Beta starter deck, or even an Unlimited starter deck. Those particular items that I just named, they would be top tier blue chip investments if you are investing in Magic the Gathering over the long term. Unfortunately, a lot of you cannot afford to play in that market. So what you're doing is you're incorrectly assuming that just because something is on the reserve list, that means it's going to automatically go up in value and it's going to be a good investment. And here's my question to a lot of you guys that are doing that. Why are, in the year 2021, why are there reserve list cards that only sell for 25 cents, 50 cents, or a dollar, two dollars, five dollars on average? Because the market does not reward those particular cards at present time. And unfortunately, the Timmy's, Kimmy's, and Poindexter's seem to think, well, Sean, you don't understand. If I buy a reserve list card that is only a dollar, and I buy 100 copies of that card, and it goes to two dollars, I just doubled my money. The problem with that mindset is there's a reason why it's selling for a dollar in the year 2021, especially if it's on the reserve list. This is the same reasoning when I tell you guys not to invest in penny stocks. There is a reason that penny stocks are only selling for several pennies a share or in some cases maybe a dollar or two dollars a share, especially if they're a biotech company. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of penny stocks are biotech companies. Because the company came out of the gate, they were issued an IPO, and they had all these Ponzi dreams in their pipeline ready to come out. And unfortunately, the market did not reward them the way that they were hoped. So obviously, the stocks at some point went through massive transitioning to the point where a lot of these stocks are now delisted off of the major exchanges. That's why they're penny stocks. And little Timmy comes along and he says, oh my gosh, I'm reading all this stuff on Seeking Alpha or The Motley Fool where this one or two dollar biotech company is going to become the next big thing. And he puts thousands of dollars into it. And of course, what happens? The stock goes up 20, 30 cents. And he looks at this and he goes, oh my gosh, I just made 10, 15 percent on this stock. And he thinks it's going to keep going higher and higher. What happens? Most cases, it falls all the way down again because there's a reason that stock only costs a dollar or two. You want to make money in the stock market? Go after blue chip companies. Go after index-based mutual funds. Go after mutual funds in general and hold them for the long term. Do not try to flip stocks. Do not try to flip penny stocks over the short term. You will most likely lose. The collectibles market is no different. If you buy wrong, whether you flip it over the short term or whether you flip it over the long term, chances are you're going to lose money. And I've said this before, in a lot of these markets, if you're going after this low hanging fruit, you are better off flipping it into the market, taking that profit and putting it into something else rather than trying to think that you're going to analyze the market properly over the long term. You got this all figured out. There is a reason why most of your top tier YouTubers that are involved in these markets, they literally have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars at their disposal. But the one thing they have that the average Timmy, Kimmy, and Poindexter does not have is they have a diversified portfolio. They are not dependent upon fourth tier reserve list cards to return a profit. Just like they're not dependent on newer modern era Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh cards to turn a profit. They are already financially established. Please learn the difference 
between speculating and investing. Again, to sum this up, speculating is generally short-term, under five years. That's what I engage in with a lot of these pop culture collectibles. Investing, long-term, five years or more. When you see me hold up a rare coin or a rare banknote or a rare piece of vintage advertising, usually I am going to be holding that item for 10, 15, 20, 30 years or more. Now, keep in mind, I am 44 years of age. I will be 45 at the end of this year. So really, I don't go further out than 30 years, obviously, at present time, because there's no reason to believe that I will be alive 40 or 50 years from this particular date. So that is something that you got to take into account too, guys. I am not in my 20s, but when I was in my 20s, I was not putting my money in speculative assets like you guys are for the long term. And that's probably, probably how I ended up in my 40s with the amount of money that I have today. I went after established asset classes, mutual funds, real estate, stocks, bonds, ETFs when they were made available 20 years ago. ETFs really weren't a thing. ETFs really came into existence in the mid to late 2000s, that's when they became a thing. So I will state back in the 1990s when I was investing, it was usually through mutual funds. ETFs really didn't exist back then. So I hope this video helps clarify my position on a lot of these pop culture collectibles. Again, if you are playing in the top tier, you are going after a factory sealed box of Arabian Nights because you can afford it, or even antiquities, or even legends. Yeah, that probably is gonna be a blue chip collectible that you can hold for the next 15, 20 years, sell it into the market, and you will make a profit. But a lot of you guys are not able to play in that size of the market just due to the funds required. So I hope that helps clarify my position. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.